Let's begin by briefly talking about something which is common knowledge. In Java, variables are only accessible within the region it is created. This region is called the scope of this variable. Let's spend some time gazing at this class called HTTP caller on the screen. You will see the various variables that are used in the class. I have also noted the scopes of these as well. The scope of member variable call name is restricted to within the class itself. The scope of parameter SECS seconds is restricted within the method called make call. Variables URI and request both are restricted within the try block. So that's the block scope. Variable exp exp is also restricted to the catch block. Now the interesting variable is client. That's declared as public and static, which means it can be accessed from anywhere in the JVM by any thread, simply by using the syntax HTTP caller dot client. It's almost like a global variable. Now what's missing in the above scopes is a scope which is specific to a particular thread. We want to be able to define a variable which can be visible to the entire call stack for a thread, but not to other threads. In other words, it should be global, but global only for a thread. Now that's exactly what thread locals are. Let's refresh our knowledge of thread locals. Anyone who has been programming in Java for a long time knows that thread locals exist, but we often hesitate to use it. In fact, we often tend to use it indirectly through frameworks. For example, in Spring Security, the user who is accessing the enterprise application is stored in a thread local variable behind the scenes. And this implementation detail is hidden from the programmer. So how do we declare a thread local variable? On the screen, you see a thread local variable called user. In most cases, a thread local variable would be defined as public static so that it can be accessed from anywhere. Even though it looks like a global variable, it operates a bit differently. You can set the variable using the set method and you can get the variable using the get method. Now this is deceptively simple. The big difference here is that it is set for a particular thread. So if thread one sets a value of Bob and at a later point of time in a completely different method, when thread one calls get, it will return Bob. However, if thread two calls get, it will not return Bob it will return whatever the value was set for thread two. Note here that the variable user itself has a global scope, but the value you store in it has a thread local scope. When the set method is called on the user object, it internally associates the value with the calling thread. When the get method is called on the variable, it simply returns the value associated with the calling thread. In fact, each thread is associated with a map of thread locals, which stores the association between the thread local and the value. The thread local class has a method called remove, which removes the value which is associated with the thread local for that particular thread. Again, it does not affect the value associated with a different thread. Now there is also a variation of the declaration of thread locals where we can pass a supplier. In this case, whenever the get method is called and no value is associated with a thread, then the supplier method will be called. Instead of null, you would get the value returned by the supplier. That will get associated with the variable and put in the thread local map. So in the example on the screen, when any thread calls the get method, it will return the anonymous user object and not null. Note again that you will get different user objects for 
different threads since that is what we have specified. Typically, the value you store in the thread local variable is thread safe since only one thread will ever operate on it. You won't need to synchronize methods. Now, this is true only if the value object is not passed to a different thread in some other way, and that will make it thread unsafe. Now, enough of theory. Let's jump to some examples which will make this crystal clear. Here's a simple class called thread local simple play. Let's go through this code. Here we declare a thread local called user. This user stores a value object of type user. Here's how user looks. Simply a pojo. It just holds an ID and much of the code related to constructor getter or setter is not shown. We have a main method which will simply do some gets and sets on the thread local user and then call a handle user method. The handle user method in turn simply delegates the handling of the user to a separate class called user handler. Now that's what you see on the screen the user handler class with the handle method. Now the handle method simply gets the value associated with the thread local user and displays it. It simply accesses the thread local object as thread local simple play dot user because as we mentioned before, the user variable itself must be accessible to the code which calls the get and also the set. Much of the other code in the handle method is not important and is missing. Here we have the print method just for printing log messages. It will also print the thread name along with the message and this would be useful for debugging. So let's go over the execution of the code and see what happens during the print messages. Over here, what gets printed over here? Null. Why? Because nothing has been stored in the user local variable. So the first time when you do a get, it simply returns null, which is empty. Over here, you will see that the thread local variable is being set with an anonymous user. That's simply called using new user and you pass the ID. So at that point, what is the association that is made? For the main thread, user thread local is associated with anonymous because main thread is the calling thread. Now over here, when we print it, what gets printed? Anonymous. Now inside the handle method, we call the get method, which will get the user associated with the main thread. Why the main thread? Again, it's the main thread which is calling get. It should print anonymous. So overall, the output of this method will look as follows. All running in one thread, the main thread. So basically, this code demonstrated the fact that the handle method of the user handler was able to access a thread local variable called user. We avoided passing the user as a parameter to this method, but it was able to simply access the thread local variable. But this example was straightforward and not very exciting. Let's get another thread in the mix and see yet another example. Now here you see a class called thread local play. Again, a thread local variable called user is created as public static final. So this way the user can be accessed from anywhere in the code. So what gets printed out here? It prints null because the user is not set. So it will always return null. There's no initializer specified. The code goes ahead and sets the user main for the main thread. So there's a user called main, which we are setting for this main thread. And then what gets printed out here? It prints user main because 
the get will return user main. Now at this point, things get a bit interesting. The code starts a new virtual thread and passes a lambda, which is going to be executed in a separate thread. I have named this thread bob-thread. So at this point, you have two threads running in parallel, the main thread and the bob thread. Note here that this line gets executed by thread bob thread and not the main thread. Get will return empty or null because nothing was set earlier in the bob thread. The set which is called by the main thread over here is not seen by the bob thread over here. This is as expected. Let's go ahead and set it in bob thread. Now when set is called on the bob thread, thread local user gets associated with bob, user bob. Note the value associated with the main thread has not been affected when we do this. So over here, at this point, it will print bob. So all this time when bob thread was running happily, our main thread was waiting on the join right over here. Once the bob thread ends, the main thread will wake up from the join call. The next statement it's going to do is the print. What will it print here? The get method over here will get the user associated with the main thread, which is still user main. So that's what it's going to print, user main. So finally, the output of the above program will be as shown. I have numbered the print lines on the left of the code and the corresponding output in the run output window is shown on the right bottom. You can see lines two and five on the output and see that the user is exactly the same user. Nothing which happened in the Bob thread affected the main thread. It still got the exact same user, user main, exact same object. Now, what if we call an initializer to create the thread local? Let's do that. Here we have a class called thread local initializer play. The only change that is made is out here during the initialization of thread local. Now the initializer supplies a value for the user when the get method is called. In the supplier, we are simply going to return a new user with ID anonymous. Now, when we run this, what do we expect? Let's see the output for this. Again, I have numbered the code on the left from one to five, and the output is seen at the bottom right. You will see lines one and three, instead of null, what's being printed is user anonymous. So when there was nothing set for the thread local variable, the thread local variable will automatically get what was supplied as the initial value during initialization. Now this gives us a good understanding of thread locals. It can be a bit tricky if you are not used to it. But if you like diagrams like I do, here's a nice way to imagine thread locals. What you see on the screen are two virtual threads, thread one and thread two. By the way, it can just as easily be platform threads. Each thread keeps a copy of a map of thread locals, each map specific to their thread. The map associates a unique thread local key, which is internally generated to the actual value. On the screen, what we see are three thread local variables, user, request, and transaction each thread would be pointing to its own copy of the value objects. As mentioned before, the keys are uniquely generated by the JVM. So in our case, if thread one calls the get method on thread local user, it will simply go to the thread local map of thread one and return the user object associated with that thread. And as you can see, the map is pointing to 
different copies of the user object, and that makes the user object thread safe. Now, unless, of course, this user object is passed to a different thread, which would make it thread unsafe. Now, this concludes the discussion on thread locals. In the next lecture, we will talk about a special type of thread local called inheritable thread local. If you like this video, support this channel by giving a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more quality content.